very first time that I ever witnessed the court pronounce a uh, death sentence. It was quite, um, it was quite a lot for me. Uh, it was quite a lot for me, and it was a lot for me because the persons involved were just teenagers. They were teenagers. They were 18, 18, 19, thereabouts. That's the people, the the defendants, the accused persons. They were teenagers. So for me, I, I just realized that they probably didn't know the gravity of what they were doing. Now they accosted the owner, the victim of this, the owner of this property. They accosted. It was a motorbike. Silly enough, it was a motorbike. So they accosted him with the use of machetes, the, the machete that you know, threatening them to give up their motorbike. And I guess this was probably a practice. They, in their mind, they probably were just stealing. You're welcome to another episode of Law, Lifestyle and the Basics. My name is Dr. Petwala Simono. I'm a lawyer and civics educator. I like to tell people their rights and about the law for free uh, because it's of my opinion that um, as a citizen of any country, in order not to be a victim or an offender, it's best that you know the law. Ignorance of the law is said to be of no excuse. You can't tell anyone that you don't know that something was in the books uh, because really who can read your intention whether you're lying or not so it's always best to be guarded if you watch this video and other videos there's some offenses that people didn't know that were offenses or didn't know the weight attached to it so join me as we get along and find out some very serious offenses and their strict and serious jail terms so today we'll be talking about offenses related to property offenses related to property in nigeria everybody knows the offense of 419 you know and people probably don't know why it's called 419 that's because it's enshrined it's encoded in section 419 of the criminal code yes you find that offense it's called obtaining by false pretenses it's in the criminal code and it's number is section 419 so that's why it's called 419 so i'm sure if i walked along the street and i asked the average nigeria was 419 they'd have a vague idea that it's about swindling and did you know that this offense is punishable with three years in imprisonment that's when you um basically in lay terms the offense is when a person you know obtains something from one another it could be money it could be property of any kind obtains them by inducement on the basis of falsehood it's called obtaining by false pretenses and it doesn't matter if there was a contract you know someone sent me a document one time you know the, all this internet scams about um, maybe cocoa producing cocoa exports and stuff like that and of course i I, I felt needing to check the internet for the document because I kept asking for details. I asked for the business CAC details, that's the uh, Corporate Affairs Commission registration. I really wanted to know if it was a an existent firm, an existent um, personality registered on that law. So I really was trying to do background checks on this proposed party, this party proposing the contract. And I saw that, um, yes, they were registered quite all right, but I still got um, inclined, I felt leading to go on the internet and I checked and I realized that it was a document that, you know, was over, you know, was all over the internet. It was something that uh, was commonplace. It was, it was a fraud. So it doesn't matter if it is even by agreement or by a document, 419 is 419, whether it's by word of mouth or it's drafted down as a document and it's punishable with three years imprisonment. Once again, the meaning of 419, the offense of 419 is found in section 419 of the criminal code and it is known as obtaining by false pretenses. So please, let's not think it's, it's being a smarty pants or being streetwise. It is a crime under Nigerian laws. Now we'll move to the next one, stealing. Now this is it's getting a, a bit advanced. Stealing, we have um, you have stealing, you have um, robbery, and you have armed robbery. Have you ever wondered what's the difference between these three? Stealing, robbery, and armed robbery. First, stealing is taking the property of a person without their consent and converting it to your own use taking the property of a person and converting it 
to your use without their consent that's stealing moving it taking it and of course it's talking about objects you can't talk about um land and all of that at best you have land grabbers and all of that you know encroachment of land but basically objects that can be moved like money and stuff like that and it's punishable with three years but if it's a criminal code is kind of like old so they say there that if it's above a thousand naira the offense will be punishable with seven years so really who's like if you're stealing a, a person is stealing a thousand naira really most likely in most cases things stolen are worth more than a thousand naira these days and so it will be punishable with seven years so that's stealing and what's robbery robbery is of course when you also combat another person's property you by taking it uh, through the means of violence through the means of violence through the means of force is it are you threaten violence or you use violence that's robbery in the case of stealing you take it probably the person was unaware of it but robbery there's an altercation between the the um, the robber rather the robber and the owner there's an altercation and the owner is under threat to give up their property because they've been induced to still do on the basis of threat or violence so that's robbery and it's punishable with 21 years imprisonment now armed robbery armed robbery is when a person takes the property of another through the means of of course uh, violence is involved but in this case it's with arms in the case of robbery there are no arms so note the difference between robbery and armed robbery there are no arms in robbery but in armed robbery as i suggest armed arm there's a threat to life there's a threat to um the person is probably uh, inflicting arm or likely to inflict arm through the use of which to do use of weapons now i was in court my very first time that i ever witnessed the court pronounce a uh, death sentence it was quite um, it was quite a lot for me uh, it was quite a lot for me and it was a lot for me because the persons involved were just teenagers they were teenagers they were 18 18 19 thereabouts that's the people the the defendants the accused persons they were teenagers so for me I, I just realized that they probably didn't know the gravity of what they were doing now they accosted the owner the victim of this the owner of this property they accosted it was a motorbike silly enough it was a motorbike so they accosted him with the use of machetes the, the machete that you know threatening them to give up their motorbike and I guess it was probably a practice they, in their mind they probably were just stealing they didn't know that they were committing armed robbery and the court found them guilty and sentenced them to death so please I hope you know the difference and I, this is especially for young people out there who are engaged in all sorts of um, especially in times like this you're, you might know someone out there who is you know was not content and wants to seek extra means. I watched an interview of a criminal who, who used to work in a bank, but and but even though he worked in the bank and he probably I think he graduated from a private university or so if I'm not mistaken, he just got this fancy idea that he was smart enough to rob a bank. Now, the average Nigerian is actually smart. You go on the internet, you find videos of people, non-Nigerians, selling us all, telling the audience how smart Nigerians are, we're smart. That is not in contention, but please do put your smartness to good use. So as I was saying about this person who was working at the bank, he was smart and he just thought that maybe, you know, we watch some of this action films too much, we watch Ocean's 12, the Ocean's 11, and we just come up. It's not fancy. Crime is not fancy in any way. It's punishable, you know. You go to uh, the prison today and you see people regret their actions. Of course, some of them, and some people are not... Um, remorseful but some are and they really wish like they, they tell themselves nobody else did me than i that's one of the greatest regrets in life you could sometimes you can blame people you could blame society why am i in nigeria why am i this you know you could blame all sorts of things but what you cannot the, the worst form of regret is when you have yourself to blame so i hope you have learned a little today about um, the offense of and it really comes from lack of contention or um 
seeing oneself as not being able to, to amount to much in life it's great and that's why you have to be very careful about your desires um, and it's also covetousness really we have to be very careful um, God is yeah God is um, God is not so God is not even bad at all the, the Bible says in the book of Matthew that um, if we being evil, what God meant was that if we being you know, susceptible to corruption, the human flesh and human desires, if we could give our children good things when we are, when they ask, how much more our Heavenly Father was so kind. Romans 8 that he says he freely gave us the Son, how much more will he freely not give us all things, give us the Son to die. So my point is that God is not bad that he will not make a way of escape for you. So please, if you're considering crimes, and you think you're smart enough, uh, it never pays. The Bible says there's nothing eating under the sun. You will be found out. And my dad always says something. And I respect him for that. He says that if you're going to be something great in life, and he especially refers to politics, he says you better not have skeletons in your cupboard because they will find it out for you. So there are many things that you think you can get away with, but you can never get away with them because there's nothing hidden on that sun. So let's be content. Thank you. Let's be content. So I wish us uh, a great time. This was Lord Lifestyle and the Basics to have a fantastic a week and, and I hope that you, you whatever it is that you're battling with I hope that there'll be a brighter side at the end of the day. This was taking support last morning. Love, lifestyle and basics. Do take care. Bye.